Right, um, my name is Ashriel Moore, the ambassador of the African Diaspora Collective to mm -hmm. Israel and the Middle East. And uh, my passion has been for years to connect our people back to Northeast and Africa, which is Israel. And so how would that actually happen in practice? Uh, we want to organize tours of our, of our people to be able to come back and to reconnect their roots uh, in Israel. We want to strengthen the cohesion between the uh, various African communities uh, in Israel, considering the fact that the largest community of African Americans outside of America are actually in Israel. The only self-sufficient community of black people in the world is in Israel. Uh, and we have so many different communities from different places in Israel that we've been working so closely together in order to pro pro provide a, uh, an example of what it looks like to actually be uh, black in the diaspora, but also understanding our cultural, historical, and, uh, and uh, historical roots and to allow us to be able to actually show that in practice. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ian, tell us a little bit about how you work with this young gentleman here. Sorry, thank you. My name is Ian Campbell. I'm the president of the African Diaspora Collective. And it's significant that we understand the power that we have as a people, we have as a collective organization, and we understand our political power and our influence around the world. So being able to connect with the ambassador from the Middle East and from Israel, connect with the folks on the ground and diaspora there, and tap into their resources, whether it's intellectual property, whether it's their physical labor or their manufacturing, be able to leverage those resources, the human capital, and improve us from the ground up. We elevate and make sure that the diaspora is elevated, and is uh, functioning, and is and just blooming, possibly profiting in a great shape or form. Okay, fantastic. And please introduce yourself and tell us how you got together with these two gentlemen. Okay, um, thank you. My name is Denisha L. Johnson. I'm the ambassador for the African Diaspora Collective, representing States. I lived in Atlanta, Georgia, and three years ago moved to Ghana in West Africa. I represent the United States because I was born here, uh, but I was not raised in this country. I was raised in Winnipeg, Manitoba, in Canada. So mm -hmm. I have a very worldly view of what the diaspora looks like. Um, I want to make a point before I continue to say that the African diaspora does not just include Africans or born Africans that have come here through migration or for work or any other purpose. It includes me. I'm a born here in the United States. I'm an African American. So I'm included in the African diaspora. I'm um, saying that to say that the African diaspora collective was brought together for a particular purpose, and it's for the development of Africa. Uh, the African Union in 2012 enacted uh, Article 3Q, which is an amendment to their constitution, which created the sixth region of Africa, which is known as the African diaspora. So the definition is uh, anyone that's living outside of the continent of Africa that is a descendant or someone uh, descended of someone from Africa. So that includes myself. President Campbell is of Caribbean heritage and uh, Ambassador Moore is born and raised in Israel. So we are the epitome of what the African diaspora is. We got together uh, because the African Union said that the diaspora needed to collect themselves. We need to organize ourselves in a way so that we can be represented in the African Union. The same thing with the United Nations needs representation. So we as an organization are the representation of the African diaspora. We came together, Ian and myself, uh, President Campbell, worked together in politics. I have a background in policy and politics. I ran political campaigns here in the United States. So I took my understanding of the dynamics up here in America to Ghana, West Africa as an entry point into what the diaspora has the ability to do in the development of Africa. So for the last three years, we've been working very hard um, to get together other people of like minds that want to either move to Africa, want to do business in Africa, or uh, want to explore the cultural connectivity through the diaspora. So I'm very excited uh, to be here at the Congressional Black Caucus annual legislative conference, um, and I look forward to more conversation. Very good. Uh, let me ask the question to the group. Um, what do you think African Americans need to know about your organization, and what do they need to do to help you to be successful? Anybody. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. 
I heard that voice. I said, let it go. So, the African Americans um, that are here in the United States mm -hmm. don't have to move to Africa. But everyone that's here in the United States needs to go to Africa. As Ambassador Moore said, um, he's planning trips to Israel. I live in Ghana, so there needs to be trips planned to the continent, but not just trips to have fun or have a, or have a party or just have cultural connectivity. There is an economic, political, and social agenda that the African diaspora tries to focus on. And so those that have businesses here in America that are small to medium-sized businesses that want to expand need to go to Africa. I myself um, am a business owner and I'm testing the market really for African Americans. So I went for the first time in 2019, not for the year of return, but for business opportunities. I saw so many business opportunities. I created an investment tour and then started bringing African Americans to Ghana. Now, since the year of return, there's been a lot of interest in Africa. The United States government has a very high interest in uh, Africa, but there's a lot of big projects, uh, large number of valuation projects, and most African Americans don't fit in that demographic. So our organization uh, is the lead or the liaison or the access point for any African American of uh, any demographic of any socioeconomic class that wants to engage or do business in Africa. So the way that you can help or the way that you can get involved is contact one of us, uh, go to our website, which is www.africandiasporacollective.com, uh, and find out what is your actual interest. Are you a business owner? Are you looking for a cultural <coughs> connectivity? Are you looking for to do some social impact work? Do you have an NGO? Um, are you an agency, a governmental agency? We have a partnership with three African governments. Mm -hmm. So there's a plethora of things that you can engage with with the African Diaspora Collective. Um, but I would encourage anyone that's watching this or anyone that's going to watch this after that not only do you contact us, but you engage uh, continuously. So one time being at this conference and meeting people like you um, and engaging with others, there has to be follow-up. So the follow-up to uh, engagement in the diaspora with African Americans is going to be through us. So we have flown here, uh, Ambassador Moore came from Israel, I came from Ghana specifically to come to this conference to meet other African Americans to engage with to get them to come to Africa. I think it's very important also just as me being the ambassador to the Middle East and to Israel, understanding how the Jews all over the world support the state of Israel, mm -hmm. even if they don't live in Israel, even if they have no uh, desire to ever come to Israel, but they know that it's very important for them to continue to contribute in whatever way is possible to ensure that Israel is able to sustain itself on its own. Uh, in addition to uh, whatever else assistance they may be receiving from other places, mm -hmm. but the Jews understand the importance of them being uh, that driving engine to be able to ensure that Israel is able to stand up its own feet. And so as we in the diaspora understand it, the importance of the skills, the monies, whatever uh, possibilities we have internationally, understanding it is very important now for us to once again reconnect with the motherland because there are a lot of things that we're able to contribute to the motherland for the development, but then there's also a lot of things that we're able to receive from the motherland. And so most people don't understand the possibilities that exist outside of America, mm -hmm. uh, but when you look at the African diaspora, it's way more vast than what you would actually imagine. And so part of our purpose is to ensure that we're able now to connect those dots for our people who may not understand the possibilities that there are outside of uh, the United States, but also to connect every black person in the world back to what we have going on on the continent mm -hmm. and also to expose the continent to the black uh, diaspora and allowing us once again to come home and to be together and to cooperate for a good cause to be able to ensure that Africa is able to march forward. Okay, excellent. And, and it's a mutually beneficial relationship. There is mm -hmm. a misunderstanding that um, Africa doesn't have anything to contribute and the fallacy in that is it it's tricks, plays tricks on the brain because every nation, every corporation has some presence in Africa getting the resources, getting the, the, the whether it's the, the resources, whether it's human intelligence, mm -hmm. they're getting things from Africa and they're developing and thriving. We need to do the very same thing because that is our connection. Let's be connect with the continent. Once you pick a country, do our DNA, 
go to a country, learn about it, and get involved, it enhances us. And without that connection, we don't, in America, African American community is not grounded because we're still trying to find our roots and we've been being whitewashed in Florida and being erased in history and being told that we actually have no value. The truth of the matter is, without us, we would have the United States. And the rest of the world depends on Africa to actually grow, develop, and thrive. We need to understand and take ownership of that, go back to the continent and understand who we are, what we contribute, how we made the impact we have on the world, and the impact we have here in the United States. So it's significantly important and we want to continue to let people know that we have to go a little bit deeper and do some research, connect and make that um, connection with either a country, a person, culture, and learn about it so you can get that understanding. Okay. And I think something is, is also very important, Ian, to, to add to your point, is that all of the resources that are in Africa, every other country in Europe, in America, and other places understand the importance of those resources. And uh, we see the migration of Chinese to Africa. We see the migration of Indians to Africa. Mm -hmm. We see the migration of other nations to Africa because they understand the natural resources and the human resources that are there. Um, but we seemingly don't understand that. We don't value that enough. And so because we leave that open, that other people are able to come in and fill in the spots where we should be filling in. And so now as the African Diaspora Collective is putting ourselves in position to be the ones who want to fill those gaps for our people so that we wouldn't allow other people on the outside to be able to come in to exploit the opportunities that we have, opposed to us being able to mutually benefit from those because I don't know too much of the benefit, if there is any, that we are benefiting from those nations coming in. But if we are able to come in, we are coming in as family, we're coming in a different purpose for a different cause and so when we do come in and we do create those relationships and we're creating those family ties we're not coming in to exploit um, what has already been done for over 400 years down in Africa and it's a continuation we see that today and so we have to the African National Collective in my opinion right mm -hmm. it has to be that group that is coming now to overturn and to change what happened in the Berlin Conference in 1882, which allowed them to be able to carve out Africa and to create and recreate names from their own perspective, not even understanding the African dynamics. And so that put us far, far behind in terms mm -hmm. of our development. And so it's time now for us to come in to change that, to put in a new African idea, and that African idea would also be led by those who are in the diaspora who have the education, have the know-how, who have the desire, all they need now is that connection and where that connection is. Okay. Okay, so th this is great information for our audience. What does success look like, you know, for your organization and the work that you're doing? Anybody? So I'll, I guess I'll take that first. Yeah. Uh, so as ambassador to the U.S., uh, success for me looks like uh, a legacy. So for me, it's about legacy building. I have four children. Um, three of the four children are of African origin. Um, so connectivity with the continents is one thing, but it's about economic, political, and social power. So the success for the African Diaspora Collective uh, in about a week will be our one year anniversary uh, that we launched this organization. So I think we've already been very successful in the one year that we've uh, been established. As I said earlier, we have uh, three partnerships with African governments, the government of Ghana, the government of Rwanda, and the government of Uganda. So it's important being a political strategist and political consultant to understand the inner workings of government. So a lot of people don't like politicians. They don't like politics. They don't want to talk about it. But they, these are the people that are responsible for the lives of my children and my children's children and the rest of the world. So if we don't take a full uh, advantage of the opportunities that we have to engage with high-level governments in places like uh, the Congressional Black Caucus and um, other entities and governmental agencies, then we really don't have anything uh, to look forward to. So the African Diaspora Collective USA focuses on high-level government uh, engagement, partnerships, uh, partnerships with NGOs, partnerships with uh, small businesses and governmental agencies here in the U.S. 
so that we can be successful in connecting black people all over the world. My purpose in life is to connect black people. So the success for the group, I would say, of all of our ambassadors, if I may say, um, is to connect us in a way that has far more, uh, far more impact than mm -hmm. what we could even see in our own lifetimes. So I'm building something in the U.S. Ambassador Moore is building something in Israel that will continue on after we're gone. The African Diaspora Collective is not here just as an organization to say, oh, we're doing something right now. We're here for the long haul. We're here um, for the next generations and generations to come. So if you think about the African Union in 2063, the people that created that are not going to be around in 2063. But they had an idea and a vision that this is how we think uh, we can be successful in advancing our people. And I think that's important um, for myself, and I would say for the other ambassadors for success, is the advancement of our people for generations to come. Many people, when they discuss success, they have a tangible uh, something that they're looking to achieve. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that the greatest success could be that we change the mindsets of our people, uh, how they look at uh, the continent what they think about the possibilities and opportunities that they have. Um, because uh, part of our job is also to decolonize the minds of our people that has held us in the position that we're currently in and has prevented us from being able to actually move forward. And so now that we're coming and we're changing that dynamic, I think that there's nothing more successful than that. Everything else that comes afterwards would be great achievements that we are able to then present under what it is that we were able to do in the ABC. But the first thing that we're starting now to do is to help understand, for example, that Israel is not in the Middle East because the Middle East is, uh, is a fabricated uh, concept, right? And the only thing that separates Israel from uh, Africa is the man-made ditch that's called the Suez Canal uh, that was built in 1869. But people won't understand that Israel is actually part of Africa because you don't see it that way. So a lot of these uh, westernized European concepts that our people have been caught under, uh, we're now providing them uh, greater access to the real knowledge of self. And so I think that's, uh, in my opinion, that's the most successful thing we can do. And every other achievement that has been added to that uh, would only be greater and greater for us. But changing the mindset is first. Very good. Ian? I would uh, definitely support and their definition of success. Uh, looking at it from my standpoint, we see where not only do we have representatives in 11 different uh, countries and uh, access to 40 governments in Africa and elsewhere, but success here within the United States is one of the larger, more financially um, empowered diaspora. And it's to utilize the resources from this diaspora that to be awakened enough to start one by one connecting with the continent, whatever country it is that they feel comfortable with or learning about. And as we see our numbers grow, we'll be able to replicate the thinking because I have two boys. And if I can't leave a world that's going to be empowering to my two sons, then I'll fail. So success is leaving a legacy, leaving a world that's better. So I feel safe when my son and his friends are out walking the streets, not being shot down by racists, not being shot down by police. Sometimes they're one and the same. But it's to create an environment where they can say, I know who I am. I know the continent, I know Africa. And they can also teach that. And we are replicating that and it spreads. Because if we're not educating ourselves and our families and our children, and we're doing this service, so the diaspora is helping to serve as the tip of the spear to connect people to the country. And tell me something about some of the events or uh, uh, projects you have going on that you think is significant. Sure. Uh, so uh, the African Diaspora Collective USA um, started out last year in Ethiopia. So uh, we got together for the Roots Energy Roundtable. Uh, to talk about various different things that have happened over the last 20 or 30 years that were not successful. So from that, we decided to um, focus ourselves as ambassadors on three focus areas. 
So myself in the U.S., I focus on women and girls, youth job creation with a focus on entrepreneurship and agriculture. So in those three focus areas are also things that I have expertise in. So these are previous businesses, previous projects, yeah. um, previous governmental agencies that we were already working with. So we created um, several events. One is the African Women's Empowerment Summit. It is a continuation of actually the four events that we had here at CBC uh, pre-COVID. It's for empowerment of African women. So a lot of people think that only the impoverished need empowerment, but that's not true. Everyone needs empowerment, particularly African women and particularly Francophone countries. There's a lot of uh, things going on with France now in Africa and the expulsion of French uh, influence in African countries. So we thought it important to not have just have women's empowerment, but have a hyper focus on the empowerment of particular types of women. So these are high level women, congressmen, first ladies, the first lady of Zimbabwe will be coming to our event. So these type of women also need empowerment. So they're very siloed, they're very um, contained, just like major celebrities. You don't have a lot of people around you that are around uh, to help you and empower you. So that's one thing that we decided to do, which is coming up at the end of October. Um, we also are, have 20 different partnerships. So these partnerships include non-governmental organizations and governments. So the government of the Republic of Ghana has a three-year partnership with the African Diaspora Collective USA to do a diaspora report. So the statistics in Africa are not very good. There's not a lot of uh, information that you can find data-wise. So we decided to take the initiative to create a diaspora report that basically says this is the impact that the African-American community is having in Africa, specifically in Ghana. And that leads to um, our, third, our, our third event, which is the Holiday High Tea in 16 regions of Ghana. Uh, that is for empowerment of small girls and NGOs. Then we also have um, an event in Uganda that's coming up next year, which is the ABC Diaspora Expo. It's the biggest and largest opportunity for all of those in the African diaspora to come to Uganda. So the government of Uganda uh, has been talking to us now about how we facilitate bringing up hundreds of thousands of people into Uganda to have not just a cultural experience, but business opportunities, um, cultural exchange, social impact work, and then having engagements with governments. Uh, we also have a partnership uh, with River State University in Nigeria in regards to cannabis. So that is the agriculture piece of what it is that I do at the African Diaspora Collective. That and the Michael O. Agriculture University. We also have a partnership or MOU with them as well to do school um, exchange, foreign exchange, study abroad programs uh, for our children and youth uh, here in the United States and also in Nigeria. So we try to focus on as many African countries as possible and having something, as Ambassador Moore said, tangible for you to, to walk away with um, mm -hmm. are some of the things that we're doing in the African diaspora like the USA. Okay. In Israel, we have approximately 200,000 Africans from various countries in Israel uh, who haven't been really operating together for the 75 years that Israel has been established. And so now we're going to be kicking off an event on the 18th of November, uh, wherein we are striving afterwards to strengthen the relationships between these communities, have intercultural relations with them, uh, strengthen the business uh, uh, relationships with them, uh, come together as one political voting block allow us then to be able to leverage that power uh, politically and uh, also in other places outside of um, outside of Israel we're looking to take the model of what has been built what is called the village of peace in Israel which is a large community of expats of African Americans which are in Israel now to take the model of the community the development of the institutions of those communities and to take it to remodel those in different places in Africa so we already have what is called uh, the Restoration Village in Ghana, and we have also a community like that in Kenya. And so we're looking to put emphasis on things that we know that our people need in these places. And so we managed to do it for 60 for 50 years in Israel. And so we're going to take that and we're going to export those things outside. Uh, we also want to ensure that we strengthen relationships between in Israel uh, between the Israeli public 
the Africans, and also those who are now in the areas of the Middle East. So we now have relationships with the, uh, with the Bahrain ambassador uh, to Israel, who is looking to provide us an opportunity to be able to also um, uh, create new relations with him. We also have uh, the uh, ambassador of, uh, of uh, Dubai uh, and, and Israel, who's also uh, helping us to move things more economically to be able to have funding for a lot of the programs and projects that we're looking to do in that region. We also have relations with the uh, Moroccan ambassador and we also have relationships with all 12 of the uh, ambassadors of African countries to Israel. Who they have a, a working group there and part of their uh, agenda would be how we can be able to strengthen relationships between Israel and those countries in a way where it'll be beneficial for our people. Excellent. That's just one of the highlights of the things that I know that's going on. Um, one of the important things for me that we have that we're working on is to make sure that people understand that your elected official actually works for you. So educating people, particularly people of African descent, people in the diaspora, for us not to sit back and allow our elected official to not be checked, not be held accountable. They make a lot of promises about, about what they're going to do for the community when they get elected. We need to hold them to those promises, and if they don't deliver, then we need to come together and put somebody else in who does. That is one of the key cornerstones that we are looking to uh, transfer people that information. They they run campaigns, and so we are part of the conversation. But people don't realize that a elected official is just a regular person. They have a job. They have a job, and they have a job. Their job is to make sure they provide a service to the community that they represent. If they're not providing that service, we put somebody else in who does. So having that understanding of people now being able to read the Constitution, read their um, the governing documents to, to know what rights they have in the community and society is key. So having those type of workshops and, and conversations and getting people, let's say, activated, mobilized, mm -hmm. so they end not just during campaign season, but throughout their, their participation in our society. We need to be active participants in our society and hope everybody who is uh, supposed to support and uh, work in the public space, hold them accountable to make sure they do their jobs. And then also, I just wanted to add, um, I'm very excited about a water project. It's gonna be our very first uh, business endeavor because we have just launched the African Diaspora Collective Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Ghana and our first project which is www.adcci.org uh, we are going to be doing a water project it's a small factory in the Sin South in the central region in Ghana uh, they produce 60,000 sachets of water a day um, and we are getting a group of investors together it's not going to be more than $25,000 so we want to start small to give people a greater understanding of what all the opportunities are in Africa. You don't need $100 million to do business on the continent. So we're testing the market as a proof of concept so that when people ask, well, what are you doing? As you have asked, what are we doing? We can have something to bring them to, something to physically show them, and then give them an actual view of the Opportunity. So the Water Factory project um, is commencing by the end of the year. If anyone is interested um, to invest or be a part of that, they can also reach us on the website at www.adcci.org. And we also have opportunities in, in oil and gas, in petroleum, in mining, in construction, development, you know, you name it, it's there, agriculture. Um, Whatever people's skill set is, the goal mm -hmm. is we need to take those skill sets and put them to work. Yes. And the opportunity on the continent is tremendous. It's vast. And people understand the sheer magnitude of the continent of Africa. Mm -hmm. It's three and a half times the size of the United States of America. So mm -hmm. most people have not left their state, or they have, they've been to one or two states. Mm -hmm. Imagine that <laughs> the opportunity, you have three and a half times the size of the land us to work on, develop and build. It's, it's just and then also, And then also the chiefs in Africa, which I'm assuming we've all had experiences with, are very eager for development. So again, the ownership piece of what African Americans are longing for can be found in Africa. 
So you can go to the continent, you can lease land for 50 or 100 years, that's someone's lifetime. That's a legacy for you to build. For the amount of money that I was putting in my VA SUV for gas every week in America, mm -hmm. to literally feed a small village in Africa. So if you're looking for social impact work, it can be found in the African Diaspora Collective. If you have your income tax check, people get income tax checks here, there might be $10,000, $12,000. You can be part of this water factory project. You can build a school in some of these places. So there's so many opportunities to do for any socioeconomic level. You just need to get on a, get your passports, <laughs> get on a plane, and come to Africa. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs>